Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp Weekly. This video is sponsored by AdamSharp.school, your home for largest catalog for iOS development videos. I have recently added workshops also to Adam Sharp School. So let's go ahead and take a look at the courses that you have. I mean, you can see that the courses are for full stack development, reality kit course, which covers all the things you need to become a reality kit developer. And you can use those skills for vision OS applications also. But one of the new things I wanted to talk about is workshops. This is a brand new thing that I just added. You can enroll in these live hands-on workshops on reality kit. Now this workshop will be on February 24, 2024, and there are only limited number of seats, just 10 seats. I want to make sure that the group is small so only 10 seats are available. It will be online over Zoom, so you can definitely register for that. And we're gonna cover a lot of things, fundamentals, gestures, how to load the models, how to even do physics effects. And the price is $250 per person. Uh, this requires a lot of work on my end, and I want to make the best workshops available. There is another workshop for Swift UI fundamentals. This will be on March 23rd. 2024 again the total number of seats are 10 again small workshop and this is for people who have never done any swift ui programming or they always wanted to learn about swift ui so learn from the best i have been doing swift ui since it was released in 2019 and we're going to cover the basics the layouts navigation presentation and even state management so make sure to take advantage of these opportunities and enroll for the workshops. Thank you so much. Let's go back to the video. All right, so now let's go ahead and learn about image detection. Instead of creating slides, I'm just gonna show you an existing video on YouTube where I have used the image detection feature. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. You'll see that I'm trying to put a some sort of a card on my wrist. And using image detection, meaning AR is going to read that image and then place an actual watch on my wrist instead of the card. And you'll see in a moment. There you go. So this is actually image detection for AR. The AR is reading that card or any kind of image. And then it is we're putting a virtual object in place of that particular card. Now, this is just an example of that we are using a small card and replacing it or putting a watch over it, but it can be used for many different purposes. You can use image detection to put a picture, you can use image detection to put a toy or start a game and all of these. But this is the main idea of image detection that you're going to detect an image and you're going to put a virtual object in there or you can even start an animation so the possibilities are endless so now that you have an idea of what exactly is image detection let's go ahead and implement it all right everyone let's go ahead and get started first of all make sure that you have downloaded the resources attached with this lecture the resources will consist of two different folders the start folder which contains a starting project and the end folder, which is a finished product. So if you open up the start project or the project inside the start folder, you will see that I have done a only a little bit of work. You can see that I've created the AR view. I've also created the coordinator by returning the coordinator. The coordinator consists of the setup UI function, which doesn't really do anything. The other important thing that I've done is that I've also added a model. We will be displaying this toy drummer model as soon as we detect a particular image, and then we will put this model on top of the image. There's also a video file called Powerpuff Girls, but you don't really have to worry about it right now. We will take a look at it in the next lecture. The first thing we need to do is to add our image as an AR resource so that whenever our AR application is going to look at that image, then it's going to recognize it 
and it's going to say, okay, I need to do something. This can be done by going to the assets. As you can see, I'm in the assets and clicking on the plus button. Now I have many different options. I can go ahead and add an image set, color set. All the way down, you will see AR and textures. Select that and make sure that you select AR resource group. You can see that when I add a AR resource group and I click on it, now I have all of this portion to add our reference images. You can use any image you want, but as you have learned in the previous lecture, make sure that your images are obeying the principles and also it are using the attributes and properties for a good reference image. I'm going to add an image which is called iMac 21. I got this image from Apple website, so I can use this, but you can see that whenever I drag the image, it is telling me that uh, I haven't really set the size of the image. Let's click on that. Make sure that you are looking at the properties of this image. And one thing you will immediately notice is that the width and the height of the image is set to zero. Okay, so it cannot be zero because whenever we are trying to look for this image, if it's zero, then we are never going to find it. I'm going to go ahead and change this to inches, but you can use any units that you want. And now I need to enter a particular width and a particular height of this particular image. In order to find the height and the width, you can use any tools that you want. I'm going to go ahead and enter the height for this image. Let's go ahead and add that. I'm going to say 28.44. You can use different heights also. And then it's coming out to be 15 point something inches. All right. So this part is done. Next, we will go back to our content view. Now, what we want to do is whenever we find this image, we want to put an anchor. And then, based on that anchor, we can attach something. In the setup UI function, I'm going to go ahead and first create that anchor. Anchor entity. And you can see that one of the overloads that we're going to use is the call image. You're only going to see this image overload if you have selected the real device. So make sure that you are selecting the real device, not a simulator. The group name will be AR Resources. And the name of the image in this case is iMac 21, but it can be anything based on your criteria. Next up, we're going to go ahead and load our model entity. We're going to use the async function so that it doesn't really block our interface. And now we're going to provide the name of a particular model that we're trying to load. We will use the sync function so we get access to the load completion as well as the entity when it is loaded. Over here, we can check that if there is any error, then we will simply print out the error. If there is no error, then we got the entity and we have to do something. The load async function is going to return you a subscription, so we need to capture that also. Make sure that you add combine. And you can see that we already have a cancelable. This means that whenever this particular subscription is going to return, we can simply assign it to cancel level. Great. Next up, we will go over here in the receive value and we will say entity dot scale if you want to scale the entity. And we will provide some numbers over here, which is the x, y, and z coordinates. And we will try to scale it a little bit, just a little bit. Next, we are going to go ahead and add that particular entity. And finally, we are going to use the AR view scene dot add anchor and add the anchor. All right. 
Now, over here, air view is actually optional, so we have to unwrap it, or we can simply go ahead and unwrap it on the top somewhere. AR view, and now we can use that AR view. And that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and run it and see if it works correctly. If it doesn't work correctly, we can always go back to our actual assets and change the sizing of this. So make sure that the sizing is representing the actual size that it will be displayed. But since this is an image, uh, we can display it at various sizes. So we'll have to just adjust to that. All right, let's go ahead and run it. So we're going to go ahead and run the app. And as soon as the image is found, you can actually see that our model is now placed on top of the image. We can even move our image and it will still be sticking over there. And you can see that it also turns the directions as the image is moving or turning the directions. So pretty cool way to detect an image and place a model on top of the detected image. Now let's go ahead and see another very useful case for image detection using Reality Kit. What if we have some sort of a poster and we want to display a some sort of a video whenever we see that poster? Right now you can see that in our AR resources, we only have one image, but I can go ahead and add other images uh, if I want to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get an image. So let me go ahead and find that image first. And this can be any image that you actually want. I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop an image over here. And we will be using this. This is a Power Puff Girls image. So let's go ahead and see that what this image is all about. We're going to go ahead and make sure that the name is a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to go ahead and name this Power Puff. And you can already see that the width and the height is zero. That's why you're getting this exclamation mark telling you that there's something wrong with the image. Let's go ahead and first change this to inches. And the size we have to figure out. So you can always open it up in preview and check out the size or any other tool to make, make sure to get the correct size of the image. I'm just gonna go ahead and enter the size. So this will be the width of the image and this is the height. And it's in inches, not meters. Okay. We already have added the Power Puff Girls video. If you have downloaded the starter project, you will be able to see the video. If I run this video, this video doesn't really have any sound, but if you want to add a video with the sound, you can definitely do that. So what we want to do is whenever we see this image, this one, the Power Puff Girls image, we want to go ahead and run a video. All right. So the first task for us is to make sure that we are loading the video. So let's go ahead and load the video. Guard led. We have the video URL. This will be bundle, which is our main bundle. And we're going to use a resource. So in this case, our uh, resource name, I believe, is called Power Puff, but make sure that you get it completely right. And this is an MP4 file. All right, so actually the video URL is different. So make sure it is correct. So Power Puff Girls. Okay, great. Else, if you're not able to load it, then, well, there's nothing much we can do. We're just going to say, enable to load the video. All right. Once we have the video URL, we can go ahead and use the AV player to create an instance of AV player. Now I have already added the import for AV foundation, so I can go ahead and create the AV player. Player equals to AV player, and we can simply pass in the URL, which is the video URL. Next up is the important part where you will create a video material. So video material equals to video material. 
using the AV player. This a video material allows you to create some sort of a coating, a material that can be put on the different models. Next up, we're going to go ahead and create the anchor. This will be our image anchor that we are creating, which we also created in the last lecture. So I'm going to go ahead and create the image anchor. This will be belonging to a group called AR Resources, and the name of that particular image is PowerPuff. Next up, we're going to go ahead and create a plane. Now, over here, you can create a plane, you can load a model, you can do whatever you want to do. I just want to go ahead and show the video on a particular plane. Now, you can use a cube also, meaning a box, but I think we want it to be kind of like a two dimensional kind of thing. So that's why I'm just going to go ahead and use a plane with a 0 0.5 meters width and 0 0.5 meters depth. But the material is an important part because this is where we will be passing our video material. I also want my plane to be not lying down but at a 90 degree angle. So let's go ahead and change the orientation of that particular plane. We can change the orientation using the SIMD quad F function. And over here, you can use the angle. Now, this is the angle that you need to provide. So we're going to go ahead and use pi, which is 180 divided by 2, which will be 90. And on which side it will be rotating to. So I'm just going to use the x axis. If you want to use it on the y or the z axis, then you can use different axes to provide the orientation. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and add this particular plane to the anchor and player dot play. But before player dot play, we need to add our AR view dot scene dot add anchor. And then we're going to go ahead and add the anchor. All right. And that is pretty much it. So this means anytime we are going to encounter the image, this one, we are going to run the Powerpuff Girls video. Let's go ahead and run the application and see it in action. We're going to go ahead and launch the app. And you can see that as soon as we detect that particular image, we are going to put a video material and a plane. And now we can see the video coming out right of the image. Pretty cool. And I think uh, you, can, you can use anything you want over here. We just ended up using a plane.